Good morning, everybody. It's Paul with Reporting Live from my sofa. And today we are continuing to talk about the missing persons case of Jennifer Dulos. As you see from the title, we are going to be talking about this is kind of the pivotal thing <clears throat> when, you know, and I, I don't want to say when it went from a missing person, person's case to, you know, a victim situation. That's kind of what they're calling it at this point. I also think that all hope needs to be held out just in case. Uh, but it, it's definitely not looking good. And <clears throat> I'm going to actually be reviewing an article today, and it's about the bloodstained clothing uh, of Jennifer Dulos being found in Hartford trash cans and the videotape evidence, and this is where some of the arraignment came from and all this kind of stuff. Um, because, <clears throat> pardon me, because it's just, again, it's these cases I think that fascinate us have all these little tidbits to them of some of it's just unbelievable and i'm reading this and i'm just like are you kidding me are you kidding me are you kidding me so you know i want to make some commentary on it with that being said let's go so again this is the bloodstained clothing of missing new canon mother jennifer dulos pardon me found in hartford trash cans records show husband's phone was in the area of the night she disappeared. Now, at first, when I read this, I'm not going to lie, y'all. I was sitting here, and I was like, oh, here it goes. Um, they got, you know, videotape evidence of the, a person that they paid to do this. Because surely they wouldn't do this themselves if they have all this agency with money and whatnot. Um, and no, absolutely not. I mean, it, you, again, the breadcrumbs just lead right back to them allegedly they have not been officially you know convicted of these things yet so you know let's slap allegedly all over this um so anyways let's continue uh so you know investigators went to her house uh when this was a missing persons case once they got in there they um it became evident that something major had taken place there's blood everywhere a cleanup of blood you know, so they were like, uh, a pretty serious, you know, attack has gone on in here. And, of course, they're suspecting that it was Jennifer. Um, so, let's get to where it, let's get out of them trying to be all artistry here. Um, so, yeah, by the time police discovered dark stains in the garage that turned out to be blood, uh, the mystery man in Hartford, shielding his face with a baseball cap, traveled over four miles in the city's north end, dropping trash bags in nearly 30 locations including a storm drain before heading back to his farmington home for the night so i mean y'all he went in like this four mile radius 30 stops 30 garbage bags do you know how many chances that is for fingerprints let's look at it from the frame of mind of we're trying to get away with this do you know how many chances that is for fingerprints your dna the victim stuff. I mean, and I guess I take for granted, especially right now, uh, you know, out basically in the woods. So I'm like, why don't you just burn the stuff? Even though we know that doesn't get rid of things. But I'm like, it makes no sense to me. I'm like, why would you go and do that? I mean, there's just, I, I will never be able to, and it's probably a good thing, I'll never be able to wrap my mind around the, the thought process of some of these things. Okay, let's continue. Um, Okay, so basically, uh, while the you know person in this uh, car was going around dumping these things, uh, basically what he did not realize is that uh, there was videotape evidence of this. As always, again, isn't that just the case? I mean, if you're out in public, you're being videotaped, y'all. Just just know that somehow, some way, there is a surveillance going on. You're being videotaped. It's the day we live in. It's the times that we live in. Um, Okay, so now let's let's continue here. Um, so now also the phone records show for so Fotis Dulos is the estranged ex husband of Jennifer. So um, detectives realized the connection between the new Cannon case and the Hartford dump job when they obtained Fotis Dulos cell phone records that showed his phone was located on Albany Avenue at the same time the mystery man was dumping the garbage bags. Uh, detectives rushed to Albany Avenue on the morning of May 31st, a week after Barbara Dulos, since Jennifer was last seen dropping her kids off at school, and recovered several of the garbage bags that had been dumped. I mean, done. Absolutely done. But it gets even better. So, let's continue. Um, the blood found on some of the sponges that clothes inside the bags matched the blood of Jennifer, who was involved. So, she was in a two-year contentious divorce and battle and custody battle with her strange husband, uh, photos that's what i've been calling him um 
So, within 24 hours, they charged him and his girlfriend, Traconas, 44, with hindering prosecution and tampering with evidence. Uh, now, they were arraigned Monday in, Nor- in Norwalk Superior Court. Um, they're still searching for the body. Um, they're hoping to find her cell phone as well. They haven't located that yet. Um, now, let's continue on here. So, the girlfriend, Traconas, posted a $500,000 bell and walked out of court with her parents. Uh, her pass. She surrendered her passport. She has a GPS monitoring anklet on. Photos still is he went back to Bridgeport Correctional Center. So he's staying at Bridgeport Correctional Center. He can't make the $500,000 bond, which I find interesting because I'm just like, is this one of those guys? And I'm going to look a, a little bit deeper into him, but it's sounding to me like he's one of these dudes that attaches themselves to wealthy women. Um, I don't know if they both, if Photos and, and Jennifer made their money together, if they come from, I don't know the history, so... You know, if y'all are sitting here like, he's a multimillionaire himself, you know, I stand corrected. Uh, but I just think it's interesting where I'm like, well, how does a girlfriend... I, I, this whole case just, it's bizarre to me because obviously you try and assign some kind of reasoning like, okay, well, they're doing it for money. Okay, well, they're doing it for custody. And again, with the custody of the kids thing, I always come back to why would you want to kill your children's parent? I mean, why would you want to do that to your children? You obviously, I mean, do you know how much, I, what that's going to do to them? So that's where I'm just like, what is the thought process? Anyways, let's continue. Uh, so the the attorneys asked for the for uh, uh, photos and his girlfriend uh, to reduce the bail because basically they're like these charges don't um they don't reflect this kind of high bail but the prosecutors are like oh no 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 more charges are coming so I mean it basically sounds to me like right now they can't charge them with murder because they don't have they haven't put it all together but it's on its way uh, once they get probably the body and I mean we're probably I mean I don't know I want to say um, if she does not turn up from missing and they find the body uh we can probably expect to see murder charges on the way so that's why they're like yeah five hundred thousand dollars is just fine and they're probably a little upset that she was able to walk right out there walk right out of court um okay please hold so let's read into some of the uh the arrest warrant affidavits uh so this is just talking more about how they went to the house to jennifer's house they found uh blood stains on the garage floor on the vehicle in the garage uh the next day they found blood stains and spatters inside the home and evidence of attempts to clean up the scene uh and then later on that's when they obtained the hartford surveillance cameras that showed a black ford raptor pickup stopping at more than 30 locations along a four mile stretch of albany avenue between baltimore and edward streets so i mean just let that sink in a little bit 30 stops and four miles uh items that are recovered from the trash receptacles in the area were stained with jennifer's blood um so i mean they're definitely guilty right there of hiding evidence you know allegedly Oh, let's see. The video stills of the pickup match characteristics of Photos Dulos for Ford Raptor, including a sticker on the rear window and a light-colored mark on the lower portion of the front bumper. Uh, also, the license plate in the truck appears to match the one on Dulos's vehicle. So, again, I mean, this part right here where I'm like, really, you're going to take your car that has... I mean, let's pretend it doesn't even have these specific things about it. Let's pretend it is a generic car, like a Honda or a Camry or something that, you know, there's a lot of. Why would you take your own car to go do something like that and stop at 30 places? I mean, the probability that you're raising is insane. Of, well, how many chances do I have to get caught? What if you got pulled over? You got 30 bags of bloody garbage? I mean, it just blows my mind. Uh, the video shows that the uh, white male matching the physical appearance of Dulo emerging from the pickup and placing multiple bags into receptacles. Um... Let's see. One clip also showed a white female with a thin build leaning out the passenger side of the truck and either placing something on the ground or picking up an item, court records say. The female's appearance was consistent with Traconos, police said. So what's going on here, too, I think, is because you know how a lot of times you see these police videos or surveillance films, videos and stuff, and they're always grainy and weird to see and all that type of stuff. So they're probably sitting here saying, you know what, it, we can't 100% see this person's face, but it looks like it's, you know, ding, ding, ding. So let's continue. Um, they did neither. Both of them did not cooperate with the investigation. Uh, in court, uh, the case against Delos was continued to June eleventh. Uh, his attorney's name is Eugene R- Riccio. R- Riccio. Uh, he said he did not believe that Delos would be able to post bond on um, post bond Monday. Um, 
And let's continue to sing here. And they refused to lower Draconis as, uh, as uh, her bond also. Um, she has a young child here in Connecticut. She represents no danger to the community. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's what her attorney was saying. Her attorney wanted it to be $150,000, her bond, saying that she has a young child here in Connecticut. She represents no danger to the community. I mean, what? It, this could go one of two ways, too. So one thing that could happen is say... Say she did something, but it's the evidence could be such that he's like, she didn't know what she was doing. I asked her to throw a bag of garbage out. I mean, we, I'm just speculating here at this point. I have no idea, but you know, and again, this is all allegedly, I don't want to sit here and, you know, convict somebody. Um, let's see. She didn't speak during her appearance. Uh, her parents refused to comment. They're sitting outside waiting to post her bell. It posted a $500,000 bell. Um, let's say, so this, then it's the article just going into the media attention that this is getting, uh, you know, where the searches and all this type of stuff. And let's see here. Farber, so, Jen, so Jennifer in the custody battle, so remember they were going through like this major custody battle. So Farber told a judge that she feared her husband would either kidnap their five children and flee to Greece with his Argentinian paramour, I don't know what that is, or kill her. So, uh, again, she's already, it's, this is already documented. You know, and that's why I think these cases like this, it's always, I just love it when people are open to somebody, especially, I mean, here's a court situation where it's documented in a court. Yeah, but when you start hearing a lot of these times, like a lot of these, like, you know, true crime shows I watch and stuff, where the friends will be like, she told me she was afraid of him, or he told me he was afraid of her, or whatever the case. You know, so it, it, people can start piecing this together, because a lot of times, I mean, especially when you're in the situation, it can be tough to say, I'm afraid of my spouse, you know, or something like that, or you explain it away, especially us that watch they watch all this true crime stuff because I mean literally the spouse could be chopping up something in the kitchen and I'm like I think they're trying to kill me I think they're plotting yeah because we know anything can happen y'all anything can happen um let's see da, 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 da. let's see yeah so I mean more evidence here um you know they found that they saw they have video evidence of them inserting something into a storm drain um Oh, they, so they retrieved a FedEx mailer box that contained two Connecticut license plates. The plates had been altered with tape and adhesive. Uh, I'm not going to read the plate out loud. Uh, the actual plate, canceled plate was, fill in the blank, which had been on a 2007 Chevrolet Suburban belonging to Photos Dulos Police said. So, I mean, here's the thing, y'all. These, these are not very good murderers. Not that anybody should be. Um... And we're going to, this is just going into a little bit more, uh, and I'll post this, uh, the, the article up in the comment, in, in a pinned comment if you want to read it. Um, but let's just kind of wind this out so it's not a huge video about it. I mean, clearly this is, I mean, this is bad, y'all. I mean, come on. Um, they're, they're throwing away license plates. I mean, there had to be a better way to dispose of this stuff. And again, I'm not trying to, like, help them out or make, you know, like, hey, let's help them get off the crime here. But it just baffles me because I'm like, what you know obviously we want to know what happened were they was this a spiraled out of control situation and they were making these really poor decisions you know and again thank god they made the poor decisions to help us find find them and put the puzzle together you know if they were swift about it my god we might not ever know they might not know she's missing you know the whole nine yards um so uh, again it's just it's so sad i and my heart breaks for those children uh, I just, I, I will never understand in my life why this takes place and why people feel so justified in taking somebody else's life and what kind of, I mean, like he thinks that he's a better, you know, again, allegedly, cause we don't know that he killed her or anything like that, but it's like, you think that you're better to have the children with her, and, but you're willing to take it to this level. I mean, are you kidding me? And then you go to the links you did have taken your, I mean, it, it blows my mind out. Anyways, this video is getting long. I apologize. So that's it. Uh, start that comment section down below if you want to. I hope y'all are going to have a great day. I'm going to have a great day. And I'll talk to you soon. Goodbye.